السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد My beloved brothers, my sisters When calamity strikes in your life And it has to strike at some point When calamity strikes in your life And it has to strike at some point The first thing a believer should do Is connect to Allah الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Allah describes the believers and Allah says those whom when calamity strikes, when difficulty and hardship befalls them, the first thing they say and they utter is we belong to Allah and unto Him we shall all return. So when calamity strikes, the first thing you do is you say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. I belong to Allah. What does that mean? As a believer, the fact that you know you belong to your maker, he made you, he has you here for a short time, and you are going to go back to him, that will cushion whatever difficulty you are going through. Don't think that you won't have hardship in your life. Do not think that calamity shall not strike you. It has to strike you. If not today, then tomorrow. If it has not already struck, it is coming. And if it, is, if it struck once, it may strike many times. And a lot of us have had it many times already. Guess what? It does not get any easier. It gets bigger because that is the plan of Allah. He rewards you in a greater way as time passes. You think it was simple because you lost a child. Wait until you lose three or four one time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not test us with that. So when calamity strikes, we say we belong to Allah. We believe that we belong to Allah because a believer is such that you don't just utter words, you believe them. I don't just say, inna lillah, and I don't even know what I'm saying. You hear about the death of a person. Isn't that calamity striking from one angle? Yes, it is. What do you say? Inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajiun. You know what shaitan does? Shaitan makes us say that word as a spontaneous effect of having heard the news without thinking of the meaning of those words and what we are actually saying. That's what happens. So that's why we are saying, my brothers, my sisters, think of it. Who do you belong to? You belong to Allah. Do you really think as a believer he would do something nasty to you? The answer is no. I lose my limbs. It's not nasty for me. If I have connection with Allah, that's Allah. Destiny is written. Rufi'at al-aqlamu wa jaffat al-suhufu. The pens have been lifted and the pages are dry. Your destiny is already there. You're going to go through tests that Allah chose for you. So take it in your stride. Inna lillah. Inna lillah. We belong to Allah. I belong to Allah. You belong to Allah. We all belong to Allah. I don't even belong to myself. That's why when you say, this is mine, this is mine, this is mine, hang on, hang on. In actual fact, you and whatever you think is yours is actually Allah's. When you came on earth, you came with zero. You suffered and struggled and fought and made enemies your whole life to get a bit of money. And then you left with nothing, zero. What was the point of that fighting? What was the point of the war? What was the point of all, the, all that toiling? If it did not bring you closer to Allah. So when you toil on earth, when you work hard, let it be a balanced working. No matter what you are working towards, it should be halal. It should be in the obedience of Allah. And I should have Allah in mind and be conscious of him all, at, all the time. Then no matter what you're doing, it will be converted into an act of worship. You go out to earn halal because you're conscious of halal and haram. You're conscious of Allah. You want to give charities. You are humble. You are a beautiful individual, you remember your duties unto Allah. The more you get, the better it makes you become as a person. That is an ibadah. That's a gift of Allah. And one day it strikes. What will strike? You have to suffer a loss. 
all of you who are in business, anyone who's in any form of job, anyone who has beautiful health, may Allah protect us all. But the day will come when Allah will test you with it. That particular thing you think, you know what, I'm calm, I'm relaxed and I'm sitting. As I was driving to this masjid earlier, I was talking to some of my friends who were with me. And we were saying, imagine how Allah can change the condition of a person in a flash. Today you're sitting calm. You don't realize it will strike. Why? Do you know why? For a believer. The true reason is Allah is giving you the opportunity to outshine the old you and to come to a new level in your connection with Allah. That's the reason why he tests you a bit more. If you didn't have tests, you would not be able to be as close to Allah Almighty as you are now. But you are because you have the tests and you're a believer. Because some people, when they have a challenge, they resort to intoxicants. They resort to everything else, the wrong things. They go and drink themselves out of that problem according to them. But it's actually creating a bigger problem. They do the wrong things. They end up in the pubs and the clubs and gambling and whatever else. That's wrong. But when you have a calamity that strikes and like I said, it shall strike, it must strike. Your iman and your connection with Allah will cushion you. It will make you smile. When someone says, how are you? You say, Alhamdulillah, knowing very well that I'm suffering. I'm going through the most challenging time of my life. I'm really almost broken had it not been for the mercy of Allah. That's what I'm going through right now. Anyone in my condition, if they didn't have Iman, they would have killed themselves perhaps. But I have Iman. Allah is keeping me afloat. Imagine the marathon, this iron man that they go for. And I'm sure some of you do. One of the most difficult parts of it is not the riding or the running, it's the swimming. <laughs> And the swimming is only four to five kilometers in that ocean. But when you do 1K, you know what it feels like. You know what it feels like. One kilometer of swimming and you're looking there and you're thinking what's going on. And you're almost dying. But you know, I got to keep on going. And you're almost dying, but you got to keep on going. What's keeping you afloat? Well, a few factors. I tell you in our lives that swim through your calamities and hardship is worse than that. What will keep you afloat is Allah and your connection with Allah. Do not lose it. My brothers, my sisters, connect with Allah. We've mentioned this hadith so many times. Get acquainted with Allah during your days of ease. And Allah will get acquainted with you in your hardship. You will have something that can crack your back, but you are still smiling, saying, Alhamdulillah. You're greeting everyone, you're happy, you're hugging. And guess what? People have smaller problems than yours, but they are in such distress and you are there comforting them. Them not realizing that in actual fact, this person needs to be comforted and here they are comforting me. What is the difference? The Iman, the connection with Allah. That's what it is. So you say we belong to Allah. Myself and everything I have belongs to Allah. My family, my wife, my kids, my parents, my children, whoever else it may be, my grandchildren, whatever it may be, we all belong to Allah. And on top of that, do you know what the second part of the statement we always say? And we are all going to return to Allah. Some of us a little bit earlier, some of us a little bit later, when Allah's prescribed time has come. Trust me, nothing was going to bring it forward by a split moment and nothing was going to delay it. If it is written, your ruh is going at this particular moment, this second, this nanosecond, when that second comes, no matter what the condition is and no matter where you are, you're gone. Simple as that. You are gone. Prepared. Allah make it easy. The beauty of it is when you go, those whom you love are following. Those who believe and their family members or their progenies followed them in belief. Allah says, we joined and connected and reunited their families with them based on that goodness. Did you lose someone in your family close to you? Good news. Connect with Allah, you'll connect back with them and be reunited soon. 
very soon. But when you go back to be reunited with your loved ones, you'll be leaving behind other loved ones for whom your departure will be considered a calamity and you're smiling and you're swimming in some barzakh that no one knows exactly what it's all about besides a little that we've been told. And here you are having gone with a smile. Those who were around you are busy crying at the loss. May Allah make us such because some of us when we die, the people will say, Alhamdulillah, the man's gone. The way we operate on earth sometimes, people are waiting for us to go. Just wait a few more years. He's old now. You know, he's unhealthy now. But inshallah, soon he'll go. If people talk like that about us, we were a burden. Astaghfirullah. I see you relate. May Allah never make that happen to us. But it's a reality. You go, you go to a good place. Do you know why? You were on earth. You tried. Yes, things might have happened, but you were not evil. Wherever you are corrected, correct yourself. Wherever you are told this is right and wrong, don't become upset at the one correcting you. If they are right, change it. Change it. It's okay. If they tell you, look, you shouldn't be doing this and that, no problem. Let me correct myself. Do not abuse someone because that brings me to the second part of this issue of calamity. I started off by saying when calamity strikes, what should you do? You first say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. I believe in Allah. I believe we all belong to Allah. And we're going to all go back to Allah. I've spoken about those two. Then you ask yourself a question. This calamity that struck, am I calm and content about it? Am I okay? Am I able to continue that swim that I was talking about just now with a smile? Mashallah. You see the professional swimmers, watch them. They glide across. Have you noticed that? Effortlessly and they super quick. Mashallah, before you know it, the best of swimmers and the fastest of them are not the ones who kick the water and who, who, who want to make the biggest of. Subhanallah. The biggest of splashes. They are the ones who glide through silently. You can't really hear much. You don't see a lot of splash, but they're gone before you know. You know what? With us in our Iman, when calamity strikes, are you going to be a professional? In the sense that are you going to be a good Muslim, mu'min? Are you already close to Allah? Does it make you fulfill more salah? Does it bring you closer to Allah? Do you check yourself? And if you do, you know what? You're going to glide through. You're going to actually swim through. Before you know it, you're on the other side of the calamity. Subhanallah. Thanking Allah. Oh Allah. I thank you for what you bestowed me with. You know why? It could have been worse. As a mu'min, I am taught when calamity strikes, tell Allah, Oh Allah, I thank you because it could have been worse. You lost one leg. What if you lost both? You lost one child. What if you lost both? Subhanallah, you lost some business. What if you lost your life? Someone knocked your car, but you came out without any scratches. Thank Allah. What if your whole body was messed? It has happened to others. Each time something happens as a believer, my brothers, my sisters, tell yourself and tell Allah, I thank you, O oh Allah, it could have been worse. I thank you that it's not as bad. At least you tested me with a test that is okay. With your help, I'm going to keep going. But with that, look at the condition of your heart. If you are content, thank Allah, you're a good person. If you are content at calamity that struck you, inshallah, you're a good person. But if you are struggling and you are really battling and it's changed you in a negative way and it's made you even worse, then guess what? You have to look at yourself. Ask yourself the first question. Have you ever harmed someone? Because now the damage of that dua they made against you is probably hitting back at you. Then there's going to be such a calamity that will strike that Allah will not help you through it because it is a punishment. The Prophet Muhammad says, be very warned and be very careful about a dua that is or a supplication made against you by the one whom you have wronged. You have made dhulm on someone. You wronged someone. Watch out for their dua because there's no barrier between that dua and Allah. When they make a dua against you, it's over. The justice of Allah will descend. If not now, just a matter of time. And we always say this. In today's world and from the very beginning, 
The system of justice is not always correct. Look at the Prophet Joseph or Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam. He was imprisoned, rightly or wrongly? Wrongly. By a justice system that existed at a time when one would have thought there was justice better than what there is today. If he was imprisoned wrongly back then, what do you think is the condition today? What do you think is the condition today? So in this world, you may not receive true justice. You may not. Do you really think that Allah, the Lord of the worlds, will let someone go when they have wronged you? I tell you what. One of the ways of achieving amazing contentment, it's not easy, but it's a fact, is to let go. Oh Allah, those who harmed me, I forgive them. Oh Allah, those who wronged me, I forgive them. Oh Allah, those who have taken my things, I forgive them. Oh Allah, those who have been jealous, I forgive them. Those who have spread rumor, I forgive them. All of that, try it out. You arrive at a new level of contentment. Because Allah says, وَالْيَعْفُوا وَالْيَصْفَحُوا أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَن يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ Forgive and embrace. Wouldn't you like Allah to forgive you? Well, if you release, Allah will release you. So if Allah has released you, where are you going to end up? In paradise. It's not easy because you need justice. You're a human. You want to fix a guy. Today, road rage is such that a guy who just cuts slightly into you because you were discourteous and you didn't even let them in and they desperately wanted to get to the other side of the road and they cut in. You get so angry that you pull out a gun on the guy. That's what's happening in South Africa. Agreed or not? You get so upset. They haven't even wronged you. That's the fact of life. They're just driving and they're thinking of how to do something and you get so raged that it's actually called road rage and it's a disease and a sickness and you get angry and you cannot release a guy who came in front of you how is Allah going to release you? that's a question what you did was far worse man so Allah says release it man just let it go it's okay fine this verse Allah says Allah is most forgiving most merciful was actually revealed for Abu Bakr as siddiq radiallahu an when he made a promise after his daughter our mother Aisha radiallahu anha was accused he said I'm never going to spend on this guy who's spreading the rumor I used to give him money he's a relative of mine no appreciation look at him spreading rumor look at him going around talking whatever nonsense he is I don't want to have anything to do with this guy and Allah says, no, good people don't do that. Good people don't do that. So immediately Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu said, you know what? I will break my oath and I'm going to spend on him again and I'll make the peace. Are you ready? Are you ready to make peace with your brother? Are you ready to make peace with your sister, with your uncle, your aunt, your nephew, your child, your parent? Are you ready? Allah is telling you, if you're ready, I'm ready to give you paradise. It's not going to be easy. You might have to let go of some money. Mainly fights and arguments are about what? About something you didn't come with and you're not going to go back with. That's what you're fighting about. You thought of that. Mostly the fights in this world are about something you didn't come with. And you're not going to go back with. But while you're here, you're arguing, fighting, punching, doing whatever. About what? That thing, you're going to leave it, man. You're going to go just now. Let release it, man. What do you want here? Allah saying, I'm watching. Your life after death is going to be far longer than your life on this earth. People have already died for 500 years ago. They only lived for 70 years. But they, di they died 500 years back. It's longer. So you should prepare for which one more? 70 years if you didn't have a house, big deal. Most of the world lives in rented accommodation. So my brothers, my sisters, when calamity strikes beyond what I've just said, you look at your condition if you're not content Ask yourself, have I harmed someone? Go make peace with them. If you can't reach them, make dua for them. Undo what you did against them. Because I tell you something amongst us seated here today. And all those who might be across the globe, they are hidden, hidden friends of Allah. You don't know. They probably do one deed. Someone you didn't even realize. A poor chap sitting in one corner there. He might have weaknesses, no problem. But 
because of some of his strengths, Allah loves him so much and you just came and you treated him badly. You did something rough. You didn't pay someone at work. You undercut them. You shortchanged them. You delayed salary. I always tell people the winner, a true Muslim, one who pays one day in advance. You do on the 30th. From me, 29th, you'll have your salary, inshallah. If I made a real mistake, 30th, it's there. And I'll pay you properly. Properly means the, the amount you're supposed to get and a little bit more. Those are the believers. That's Iman. To we've lost it. Brothers and sisters, we have lost it. Work for a Muslim. Firstly, he'll give you the lowest possible salary. Secondly, he will not pay you on time. Thirdly, he'll make you the problem. And fourthly, he won't stick to the conditions. He'll call you outside hours for more without any recompense. That's what Muslims are all about. Why? Change it. Calamity is striking upon us from every angle. You know why? We are causing oppression against one another on a daily basis. How many of us talk good about one another behind their backs? But when it's something bad, it flies like... Subhanallah. And when it's good, we don't even say it. Go out of your way to say good words. See, you'll change the whole world. So what if they have one, two issues? I was saying, if it's a friend of Allah, I promise you, you harm them with your tongue. It's written already. The angels have already written what happened. They're waiting. You either seek forgiveness or when the time comes, sadly, you're going to have to pay for it. Through what? Disaster, calamity in your life. Allahu Akbar. May we make peace before that comes. May Allah forgive us. And like I said, if it happens to any one of us, I promise you, try it out. Be the bigger person. Forgive for the sake of Allah. Release. What hasn't Allah given you? When someone swears you, ask yourself, what hasn't Allah given me? He gave me way beyond the person who is swearing me. Release it, it's okay. That's why when Aisha radiallahu anha was accused, guess what Allah said in the Quran? Allah says, those who came with the accusation, they are from amongst you. They are in your midst, from your kith and kin. Don't think it's bad for you. It's actually good for you. What do you mean? They spread rumor about me. How can it be good for me? Your status is elevated and we're giving you an opportunity to see if you're going to forgive this person or not. You forgave them. Subhanallah. You arrived at a status beyond your imagination of contentment in this, in this dunya, in this world, of goodness in the deen, the acceptance to do good deeds. Allah gives you acceptance to do good deeds. You are not sitting here because you wanted to sit alone. You are sitting here because Allah accepted that want of yours to sit here. That's what it is. And above that, Allah Almighty says, you know what? We will forgive you. We will forgive you in the hereafter. Because Allah's quality of forgiveness, He is the most forgiving. When He sees you have a small quality of it, He'll forgive you as well. My brothers, my sisters, I wish to end by saying, let's not harm one another. Let's not oppress one another. No matter who it is, at home, at work, wherever else it may be, let's talk good about one another. We are an ummah. We are all members of the Ummah and this Ummah needs us. It needs every one of us, everyone seated here, everyone who might hear this later. The Ummah needs you, everyone. And to be a positive member of this Ummah, learn to have a big heart, learn to sacrifice, learn to let go of things that are not so important. It's okay. What are they going to do? If they say this and do that, it's okay. And wherever the need arises to stand firm for a cause, we stand for it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah bless all of us. May Allah soften our hearts. May Allah truly make us better people so that when we fulfill our salah, our hearts are content. When we say Allahu Akbar, we're not thinking of our enemies. We're rather thinking about Allah and how insignificant we are. I need the salah. I desperately need to put my head on the ground for Allah with a clear mind to say Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Not that I'm busy thinking about, let me spend my time cursing this one and hurting this one. Let's not do that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.